Bishop, thank you so much. Always such a pleasure to be in this cathedral. Now, I am only going to speak for a few minutes. I serve as the kind of uh, human equivalent of the coming attractions before, you know, the movie. And it is a terrific and magnificent and uplifting movie, which is great for me because it allows me to be a little depressing with you here. Uh, with no worry that you'll go away depressed at the end of the evening. I, I do want to talk very briefly to kind of set the scene for this year of ecological thinking here at the cathedral, to give you just the briefest of updates about where we are on this planet, and I apologize for how dismal the news is. I wrote as the bishop said, the first book about climate change 20 years ago. The only thing that has changed in those 20 years is that the speed and the scale of the unraveling is much faster and much larger than we would have imagined even two decades ago. We are witnessing the unraveling of, no, check that. We're not witnessing the unraveling of creation. We are unraveling creation, um, and we're doing it with enormous rapidity. In the last 18 months or so, as the scientists who have always been sober and concerned and worried about this have turned to a kind of panic, we've seen almost weekly reports of some new horror from around the world. Our oceans are turning acid at an enormous rate. The pH of the Earth's seas has dropped from 8.2 to 8.1 in the last decade or two. We're seeing the melt of everything frozen on this planet, not just the sea ice of the Arctic, but also the high glaciers in the Andes and the Himalayas that water one in three human beings. We're seeing drought on a scale that can only be described as biblical. Um, the, I've just returned from Australia, from Melbourne, where earlier this year after a week of temperatures higher than had ever been recorded in that place before. They suffered a brush fire through the suburbs of Melbourne and in the course of a few hours killed 200 people. Because all that water has been evaporated from the surface of the earth, it's going to come down someplace else. And so in other parts of the planet, we're seeing flood on an almost inconceivable scale. The number of extreme precipitation events at this latitude is up about 35% from what it was. And it's coming with enormous and immediate cost to our brothers and sisters around the world. Last year, 70 million people joined the ranks of the hungry on this planet, mostly because of declines in yields due to heat waves and other effects of climate. We're getting more hungry people now, not fewer. Medical care, as the British Medical Journal, The Lancet, reported this week, will be tested more severely by climate than by anything that it's ever faced in the course of the century that comes. Already, we can find millions upon millions of people suffering from diseases like dengue in places where they couldn't have gotten them only a decade ago because the mosquitoes that carry them now have expanded their range. Scariest of all, this cycle that we have kicked off by burning coal and gas and oil in the atmosphere now threatens to get out of control in ways that even if we manage to bring ourselves under control, we may not be able to arrest the damage. For instance, as we warm the Arctic, we're melting the permafrost and beneath it there lie great stores of another global warming gas, methane, now seeping quickly into the atmosphere. We have no practical way, even if we stop driving and running, burning rainforests and running factories tomorrow, we have no practical way to refreeze the Arctic, uh, 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 to turn back these tides. We have to act very, very quickly. Our scientists tell us we have to act in a matter of years in order to have any real chance of reversing this momentum. That's the moment that we're at. <coughs> But that moment has also given us certain gifts, and one of them is an understanding of exactly the outlines of our predicament. The most important number in the world, 350, <coughs> is a number that we didn't know. 
even 18 months ago, until it was, as it were, discovered six blocks from here in the, um, in the offices of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Science on Broadway. Um, there, James Hansen of NASA, our greatest climatologist, and his team were able to, after the Arctic had melted, demonstrate that 350 parts per million carbon dioxide was the most we could safely have in the atmosphere. It's a very tough number because we're already past it at 387 parts per million and rising. That's why the Arctic is melting. That's why <clears throat> Australia is on fire. And that's why we now have to grapple with this problem in a way that <clears throat> we can scarcely imagine. Global warming, <clears throat> climate, is not a problem for the future. It is a problem for the present. It is the greatest problem we have ever faced, the greatest crisis that human beings have ever run up against. It is the only thing that we will ever do, the results of which will be written in geological time. <clears throat> 